Hello, this is Mr. McGovern. We are looking at the ninth video in the Simple Harmonic Motion series, and we're looking at energy in these Simple Harmonic Motion um, systems. So we'll look at energy bar charts and then graphs of energy. So I'm a big fan of energy bar charts. Um, I use them right through rotational motion, um, linear motion in, in level two, and now we're looking at them here in the Simple Harmonic Motion. This is my spring which is started from below the equilibrium point, the equilibrium points with the dash line, it bounces through the equilibrium point and gets to the top, and it will keep bouncing down again and up again and down again. We're just looking at three points in its motion. So when it's at its lowest point, we can call gravity zero there. The good thing about gravitational energy is we can call it zero um, wherever we want. So at the bottom there, we're calling it zero. It's, it's at its lowest point, so it's not moving, so it has no kinetic energy, but the spring is stretched out. So we can say it has five bars of spring energy, five bars of energy. As it's moving through the equilibrium point, it's now moving, so it's going to have some kinetic energy. It's also higher up, so it's going to have some gravitational energy. And the spring is not as um, compressed as before, so it has less spring energy. Now the important thing to note is that the total in Two of these graphs so far is still five bars. The five bars of spring energy from the first graph has been distributed around gravity and kinetic in the second. As it moves to its top point, so it gets to its top point and it stops moving, its kinetic goes down to zero again. Its spring energy is um, it's not as um, under as much tension, so there's not as much energy stored in the spring, so that gets less again. But the masses are higher up again, so they have more gravitational energy. So once again, the important thing to take out of this is that there's still only five bars of energy. So everything's balanced. Um, those of you who might consider yourself scholarship students might notice something strange, that from the first situation to the middle, it lost three bars of spring energy, and then from the middle to the highest point, it only lost one bar of spring energy. That's not a mistake. Um, that's something that you might want to work through to do with the formulas for energy spring versus energy gravity versus energy kinetic, if you're considering yourself a scholarship student. Okay, I can do that as an energy bar chart. I can do it also as a, a graph. So this is a graph of um, something doing a full cycle. So starting at the bottom, getting to the top, and then getting down to the bottom again. You can see that with the blue curve, the gravitational one. So when it's at its lowest point near the start, it has zero gravitational energy. It gets to its highest point where it has the most gravitational energy, and then lowers down again, and we get to a full cycle. So as that gravitational energy increases, the grey one, which is the spring energy, decreases, and... You should try and pause the video and work out what's happening with the kinetic energy, why that does two peaks during this as opposed to um, the gravitational energy which only does the one peak. But again, the important thing to see is that the total energy which is in green is constant. It's the same amount the whole time. And this is because this is a closed system. Energy moves in different forms within the system but it doesn't leave. The system of the mass bouncing up and down on the spring is is closed, no energy can get into it and no energy can get out of it.